Welcome to Clock Tower. I'm Brandon, and today we're going over AOT Final Season. This is the third iteration of the AOT series. I have this build up here. This is the overview of the deck itself. This is the Salvage Choice build. Running the new level 1 combo into the new level 3 combo, but we're seeing a lot of the old core cards as well. This runs a pretty mixed variety of both cards. Um, you'll notice that, yes, that is the new... You'll notice that, yes, that is the old anti... You'll notice that is the old gear, not the new gear. That is intentional. We'll get to that. Uh, but starting off at level 0, we have the new Levi. This is your new Levi Ricky. It's a typical search Ricky, level 1 or lower. And it also has the ability of when your other characters attack, it gets 1,000 power, so it can be 3-5 power overall on its attack turn. Pretty helpful, pretty relevant in power-wise, so getting that 3-5 line that we're really hoping for in a level 0, but also ability to help get us into level 1 quicker. Next up we have Historia, Political Meeting. Uh, on play, you can look at the top card of your deck, either leave it there or put it in Waiting Room, and then it's a second ability to be able to discard a card to salvage a character based off of the level of the card revealed off the top card of the deck. Allows you two opportunities either keeping the card that's already there or discarding that and hoping for the best for the next card, allows you to be able to two opportunities to choose the card on top of your deck in order to be able to get the character you're looking for from Waiting Room. Again, it does have to match the level there, so if you see level zero, you can potentially mill that zero and reveal a higher leveled character to get the card you're looking for. Um, notably, you do have to grab characters off of this. We then also have the Climax Swap. This is new into the third set. This is also a mill three, so it helps you get into the next deck faster. Climax swap is relatively important to the set, so having at least one of these is important. I run two, uh, just to make sure that I can have access to it at any time. We also continue to run the To Seize Freedom Armin. This is our 3-5 center runner, staple from set two. I have this as four of, this is a very strong level zero. Uh, pairs really well with our Brainstormer as well to help create a very oppressive board at zero moving forward. We also have the single ray of light Nikasa. This is the brainstormer where if another character moves, it gets 500 power and your opponent can't side attack into it. So bringing that alongside the Armin puts the Armin up to 4k power and your opponent has to crash zeros into it. So it makes the level zero game really interesting as regards to forcing your opponent to clear board, allowing you a little bit of damage advantage early, especially if you're able to clear board with the Armin. It also is a salvage brainstormer, so you're able to continue to mill through the deck, help continue to grab pieces out of waiting room back in. We then also, rounding out our level 0 lineup, run the Gabby. Again, when your other character is placed on stage, can get 1,000 power until end of turn, up to 2 times, so again, 3-5 power. When this card goes to waiting room, you can discard a card, look at 4 cards, choose one level 1 higher card, and add to your hand, put the rest in the waiting room. Mill through your deck help get into the next refresh a little bit faster. This allows you to be able to also grab events off of this, specifically the the old gear. This also is another hand filter tool to be able to get the cards you need going forward outside of level zero. Going into level one, we have a very, very small level one lineup. We basically kind of go all in on the Mikasa on this lineup, um, in part because we're going to be bringing in things early and quickly next play. So we're kind of Using this Mikasa, hitting about that, sitting at about that 7-5 power line on attack with the Climax to help generate resources, to help fight with board a little bit here. Sitting at 7-5 offensively uh, is really helpful with that. And being able to make sure we have the pieces we need, mill that we need, going through additionally four cards before the trigger itself. Uh, so potentially if you try field this 15 cards. Definitely a way to get into the next deck, have a little bit of decent selectivity to get us into the place where we need to go. Paired alongside that, we have the old mobility gear. Allows you to search for a character, add it to hand, discard, and then move one of your characters to a different position on stage. This can allow you to potentially save the Mikasa on field, whether bringing this to the back row or moving to another position on stage. This can allow you to potentially save the Mikasa level 1 combo, allowing you the opportunity to recur that combo in another way. So being able to use this event to not only save a character, but also to hand filter to be able to get into that next stage and that next place where you're trying to go. Hitting level two, initially we have the refresh counter, 2-5 uh, backup allows you to be able to get the deck state you're looking for, um, especially if you trigger a bunch of climaxes really quickly, you can get those out and back into your deck. We bring in also the Keen Mind Armin. This is the changer 
into the more powerful Armin that everybody is likely running in order to help power up their board and have hexproof on field. This also powers up a lane specifically by 2,500 power. Uh, so you can make your Mikasas up to 9,000 with Climax. Allows you to have remnants of previous level ones. It also can help power up uh, other things as well with early plays, for example, to be able to get those over the new thresholds and power lines you're looking for. We also then run the changer as well for the Mikasa. The 104th Cadet Corps class Mikasa allows you to change into Resisting Fate Mikasa. Another form of early play can get up to 9,000 on attack. Has the changer at the beginning of Encore step to put that card into Waiting Room if it's rested. Uh, so it does need to win board or be rested at the end of uh, your attack phase. So making sure that you have that in place as well can potentially pay out additional climaxes as well. It does sit 7,000 base, which is decent, but uh, you're really trying to play this into the change effect to get those play early plays onto board, which we'll kind of go over when we get to them. We also then run one of the memory kick counters. This allows us to be able to affect your opponent's field, remove characters from their field on their turn, which can mess with some of their numbers and some of their abilities as well. So running at least one of this is very important, especially as a 3k backup on top of all the other power that we're looking at, this can allow you potentially to hold board very effectively and threaten in multiple lanes. As we get to level three, we run one of the Aaron Determined. This is the new early play with the new set. Uh, four or more early play during your turn gets 2,500 power, so it sits at 11 and has the ability that you stock kick your opponent's character. When you get the reverse, it also heals. So a lot of all at once for this one early play, uh, but realistically, this is our off early play. We're really trying to play into the Resisting Fate Mikasa and the Resisting Fate Armin as characters bring those in early and ready to go. For our level three combo, we have the Aaron Titan Declaration of War. Uh, so 1,000 power for each backstage character of your opponent. So this does depend on your opponent's board a little bit regarding power. Uh, but we're having the back row support anyway. That's not going to matter a whole lot. Um, so up to 12,000 with Climax, uh, not including any of their supports. Uh, heal on play, and you can ditch a card for the combo that allows you to icy tell your opponent. But instead of just looking at Climaxes, you also look at level zeros. So looking at the ability to be able to potentially icy tail and not have to worry as much about your opponent's compression as much as they like zero count and their zero, uh, climaxes in com combination. Um, most decks tend to run somewhere between uh, 16 to 18 zeros. It's kind of about the average of what I've seen so far. Um, so kind of somewhere in there with that into the new deck, especially if they're trying to get level twos and threes on field, um, they're potentially likely to have a few more of those in deck. So uh, this allows us to be able to get some pretty consistent damage in place. Uh, even with it only being an Icy Tail 4. We also run the Gene Covering Fire, 500 for every other, so up to 11.5. Um, on play, bring another character from hand onto stage and give it another 2k power, so it could power up something else, say the Aaron Titan for bringing that on field. Also cheapens that a little bit as well, um, if we're running low on stock counts, which we, we have a pretty decent-sized uh, mid-game, so stock counts could be a little bit uh, heavier on that end. So this is why having this is a pretty useful tool. This also has climax lists. You can also deal damage, additional damage without a climax with this card. Uh, pay three, ditch two to burn four. Um, so if you're having issues getting that climax into hand, you have this as an alternative out as additional burn four. We have the resisting fate Armin. This is your assist that we can bring on at level two with the change. Powers up uh, core characters in front of it by 2k power. Um, so that'll hit everything except the Gabby uh, that we run. It also grants them Hexproof. It itself has Hexproof, which is vitally important as when trying to be targeted. that cannot be targeted by your opponent's effects, so any kind of wind triggers cannot affect it, uh, or your characters that it gives the ability to. So effects that target this thing, like, I don't know, Neg Soul. Um, we should have to keep an eye on some Neg Souls target characters, some, char some target the, their own characters. So you have to keep an eye on some of those things, but a lot of things like that can be very useful in helping keep board around, helping maintain board, and, and uh, allow that kind of little bit more board-based strategy to 
fall apart around you as you control the board. Um, also, when it comes onto stage, you can look up the, to top X number of cards depending on what how many cards you have at that present time. Notably, when this is brought onto field, it is brought onto field with the change effect at the beginning of your encore step. Um, so before your characters have actually left field, if you've reversed your own characters, this card's brought on field, so you can look at up to five cards if you have a full field, because it's the beginning of encore step. This, so having that in play alongside the Mikasa Brainstormer allows for some really interesting plays with our other card, Resisting Fate Mikasa. Now this is an effect you could do originally in set two, because all these, all, all three of these cards are set two cards, but uh, with the support you have around those cards, it makes it a little bit easier to help generate additional resources like the stock, for example, to be able to help pay out for the end game. So Resisting Fate Mikasa, 2k power if, all, if, if you have two or more other core characters. So as long as you have three core characters on field, aka Armin, back row support, and your Brainstormer, it sits at 11k by itself with the Armin sits at 13. Um, when change effect happens, you can heal. It also has the ability at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase, you can pay one and swap field swap it with another character. Uh, this helps to guarantee Mikasa to survive a turn, but it also can put Mikasa, with its power threshold sitting at 11, defensively by itself, in an interesting spot because it can also move to another spot because it's during the attack phase. It pairs with the Brainstormer, so it becomes 11-5, and your opponent has to front in, frontal attack into it. Uh, so if you put this in front of their weak lane, they have to crash their weak lane, and now they have an open lane. Uh, so you can continue to stick damage despite that. So you can use this to kind of play around with your opponent's board a little bit, uh, set your pieces in the right spot to uh, control how you want the board state to go. Um, forcing them to frontal attack can also trigger things like the memory counter. To be able to remove it from field so that all of a sudden now conditions aren't being met. So it has some really interesting synergy there with some of these effects to be able to deny your opponent's uh, mid-game strategies. But it has also now the tools around it to be able to help support it and help generate resources a little bit more effectively. With this deck having uh, two plusing triggers, being the salvage and the choice, as opposed to um, the old build where it was running the wind and the um, split soul, those climaxes allow more resource generation to help support and sustain these cards and pulling off some of these plays a bit more aggressively than you may have had to in previous builds. Overall, this deck is really trying to go in build towards that mid-game, trying to take advantage of some of its tools and resources that it's able to generate early, or even through climaxes or whatnot, to build a decent state of compression to bring out a pretty uh, pretty aggressive mid-game board to close with a rather cheap top end to be able to have all the pieces to try to close out a game. Um, you're really looking and playing towards that mid-game, so you're really kind of pushing to get to level two, um, which is why we're also, which is why we run three of the Ricky. It's why we also um, have these tools to help salvage resources in that mid-game uh, with, with the gear, with the other tools to power up field to then start taking advantage of the board then. Um, so we have a lot of tools to be able to help with that. Um, and it's worth noting that those tools exist in the deck itself. Um, so really playing towards that mid-game, really playing towards that seizing control of the game and being able to close out your opponent through that additional burn damage at the end uh, for relatively cheap. So control mid-game, fight for power, fight for board, fight for forcing the opponent to spend more resources in that mid-game than they may have liked to, um, especially as we're looking at a very mid-game-centric area right now with decks building and deck, uh, as we see with decks such as Quince, as such as Kanata, where they're focusing on really getting to that level 2 board and kind of stabilizing there, trying to push damage off, trying to negate damage coming through, and kind of sitting there. I think that's very important to recognize that in amidst with this, trying to use the Resisting Fate Mikasa with the uh, Brainstormer, with the uh, Armin, to push your holes into those decks, forcing them to spend additional resources to save their characters, to save board, to try to force their way back into their game plans, uh, whereas you're able to respond a bit more efficiently and effectively. Uh, 
Alright, so that's been the AOT deck. Um, we're going to do some gameplay of that on Thursday. Next week we're going to have a clock talk. We're going to be looking at more results, looking at Spain and both Toronto. Uh, looking at Spain, Toronto, and if we get results from Mexico, we'll uh, talk about those as well. As we begin to reach that halfway point of the season, we're looking forward to seeing how the season continues to develop and go. Um, from there, we'll also look, begin to look at, after that, on uh, Thursday, we're going to go into Five Cards, Five Minutes once again, looking at the next set coming up, which is going to be uh, the new Bunny Girl Senpai deck, or the new Bunny Girl Senpai, uh, the new... Um, the new Burning Girl set coming out. We're looking forward to uh, looking at more cards from that as well as uh, a deck in two weeks. So with that in mind, we're really excited to see what this uh, holds. And with that, we're going to... We're looking forward to seeing how this set continues to go. We've had a couple tops already in Toronto with this deck. We've already had a couple tops in Toronto with this set, so we're expecting to see continued results of AOT doing really well. So with that in mind, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.